Thank you, viewers, for helping make my new book a bestseller on Amazon, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Okay, this is, uh, I'm not so sure about this trip. Not really what I had planned. Uh, um, where I launch, I have to be concerned about the roughness of the sound. It's a little choppy. Anyway, I'm going to uh, switch plans and uh, going to go do some uh, deep jigging and, and see. Uh, bug, you know, plum gut. Also look for Alvies there, and uh, I bet I'll find something. Uh, we'll see. Maybe it will be awesome. Yeah, I don't seem too enthused there. Uh, let me explain. So um, I had a plan. It involves uh, launching the boat directly into Long Island Sound, and uh, you know, I'm by myself. When I got there, there's a little bit of a roll on the sound. The wind's not quite down what it was supposed to be. They'd actually changed the forecast right before I left. Um, so I, I had to, I actually had backed down the ramp, was ready to go, and then decided, no, I'm, I'm going to make another move instead. Drove back closer to my house, launched, and now I'm taking a run uh, about 10 miles east and going to go fish the deep rips. Now the problem is I haven't been out here since springtime, <laughs> and I don't have any clue what's going on. Actually, the wind's been blowing for 10 days straight. I, I know some people probably got out the previous day, but I have zero clue what's going on here. Um, but I did throw the appropriate gear into the boat, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to see what's going on. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Okay, I'm just motoring to the top of the drift. Um, I've actually made a couple of drifts, and I've got a couple of bluefish, and I'm, I'm happy to get those to establish that there's some life here. And, uh, yeah, this current's going to get ripping. This is an area of water of roughly 45 to I'll be fishing to about 85 feet. Uh, the current at times will move between 5 and 5.7 miles an hour as measured on my GPS. So, yeah, um, I'm going to go strictly three-way bucktailing here to start um 10 ounce cannonball to stay down that's like an ounce and a quarter bucktail it's really the cannonball weight on there it's a three-way rig you will get to see it quite a bit and i'll explain um in a bit actually i'll explain now okay so three-way swivel and uh off of that comes about a five foot length of 80 pound liter material you can use fluoro you can use mono um, and then you've got the bucktail, which is usually around an ounce and a quarter. It's got a strip of, in this case, a fat cow jig strip. It used to be pork rind. You drop that rig to the bottom. You take a couple cranks up because if you don't do that really quick, you're going to lose the rig. It's a very sticky bottom. Bottom is up and down, very sticky. With the fast current, oh, the fish just settle into this area, and they love it. And, yep, hit bottom, come up. Just try and follow the bottom contour. That's why you're going to see me look at the fish finder a zillion times because that's what I'm trying to do. Off the other loop of that three-way swivel is about a one-foot length of line with a uh, sinker on it. I use cannonball sinkers because they don't get stuck in the rocks as easily, and it takes a little less, uh, they have a little less resistance, so you don't have to use quite as much lead. Uh, right now I'm using uh, a 10-ounce sinker to keep this rig down. And that one-foot length of sinker line should break easier than the main lines. I'm using 30-pound test main line that length of suit, uh, sinker line is also 30 but I've got an overhand knot and it, it would break uh, before the main line would. I don't know if you can see it on the fish finder uh, on the left hand side you can kind of see that I'm coming up the slope that's why I'll be picking up some line those quick yanks you see me making those are my perception of what are hits they could be bottom collisions I'm pretty sure those are hits probably short blue fish hits and see the bottom is going to drop off slightly so I'm going to let a little bit of line out right there make sure I touch up with bottom I want to be close to the bottom you know, a couple feet off the bottom If that's a blue, that's going to be a big blue. It's 
Draper. Pretty good one too. Slottish. And this is Eastern Long Island. All right, get that high camera set up so we can uh, watch from a, a different angle here. So, by the way, this rod is what's known as the Skinner Fluke Rod. It's the dark matter um, jig and bounce medium, the original six foot eight inch, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was designed for ocean fluking, but it is great for this and also for jigging spoons. Um, yeah. And the weight range for fluke jigging is like, you know, two to six ounces. But I'm hanging a 10-ounce sinker off of this, and I will go to a 12 uh, a little bit later in the tide. All right, a big blue, the, the camera's gonna get a little rocky here from the boat waves, so. Let's uh, move on to the next drift. Okay, I'm back farther in the rip where I got the bass before. Oh wow, looks a little loaded down there. If this is a bass, then that's going to be the answer. Going to have to uh, maybe start to drift a little bit. Yep, that's what it is. Got to start that drift not quite as far up because the bass are back here and I've not been getting through the bluefish. Got to, got to not go far. Yeah, the comments there. Um, you know, I'm not showing you all the fish, and uh, at this point, I've got three bluefish and a bass, and I kind of hooking those bluefish pretty early in the drift and the two times I got bass were um, when I went through that bluefish area and like uh, got through the gauntlet I guess and uh, bluefish didn't get me and then I got bass. Yeah, so you'll see boats zipping by. This is the way everybody fishes. You know, you have to run up current. The current's going to take you back between three and five plus miles an hour. Um, and then you got to run up against the current again. So constantly, you know, you're, you're going to have boats running up both sides of you. And, and, you know, when I run up, I have to do the same thing, uh, split through. Okay, so, uh, another bass here. in a row in that peak 
more than five knot current. Right, I am at a time now where I'm seeing current speeds uh, somewhere between five and 5.7 miles an hour. Yeah, that's real fast. It, it, it doesn't get much faster here. Um, but yeah, well, these, these fish are made for that. Nope, maybe I'll get to the bass, bass zone this time. I think I got through the bluefish spot. Oh, we'll see. I think I got through it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, striped bass are winning five to four at this point. Um, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of bluefish around, though. These guys seem to be farther back, and I'm trying to shorten up the drifts a little bit um, to, to get these. Okay, let's take a full run up current because uh, it looks like I'm almost to the main rip. There's a rip back there you haven't seen yet, and that, that's the roughest part of the place. Um, but I've been able to stay ahead of that. So let's take a look. You'll get pretty much uh, a look at the full length of when I say a drift. Uh, you'll see how far that is now. It looks pretty far, but again, keep in mind that you know drifting back the slowest parts of the drift are probably at this point uh, a little bit over four miles an hour and then the faster parts of the drift are five plus. Um, this can be or is treacherous water uh, on many days and even on a day like today in the back of the rip it's pretty nasty. Um, and I can tell you that every time I've been out this year I've been the smallest boat here. Uh, this is a very deep wide boat, very stable. Um, it's funny though when I when I'm not the smallest boat, it's usually uh, these guys who come out on one of those Sea uh, Do Fish Pro jet ski things. But as far as boats go, yeah, I've been the smallest boat like every time. So, all right, well, there's the length of the drift, and I'm just uh, you know setting up now. And this boat is 16 feet four inches. Um, and if you know someone said to me, hey, I want to do uh, plumb gut in a 16 foot aluminum. Yeah, it's got to be the right one to do it, and, and this boat is. It's, it's very good. And if it looks like I'm wasting bottom time here, well, I, I know exactly where I am. And um, you know, let, letting bo the boat settle a bit, and I also uh, know that when I drop down, I'll, it'll be at the right time. Um, I don't want to drop in too early, because then I'm going to be dropping into like 90 feet of water, scoping out, but... Uh, you know, it's it's all timed out so that when I drop down pretty soon after that, I should be in a fishy area. Seventy-five feet. So there's some bass up in here. I think that's a bass. Yeah, that's a bass.
So you know you can hear boats zipping around in the background, and I, I can tell you in the few hours that I fished here this particular afternoon, th there were at least fifteen to twenty boats at times. Everybody extremely well behaved. Um, yep, yeah, just people know what they're doing. bass was actually way ahead of everything. Hmm. Yeah, that good old Uncle Moe's D hooker. Um, yeah, like I said, you're not seeing uh, most of the bluefish, and th that little tool, very handy. It's a link to that in the video description. They are quite inexpensive. Go for two. Yeah, got time. Yeah, normally it's one fish per drift, and then you go right back up. Got that fish kind of early in the drift. Still some time. Oh, could have had it. Come on, two bass on the drift. Let's go. I could pull up a half a fish. What is this all about? Wow, that's weird. Strange fight. Okay, 75 feet. surprise me.
this hit is going to be very clear to see and it's exactly a typical bass hit on a bucktail. Wow. Well, that's the biggest. <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right. Uh. Oh. Wow. You know what? I want to put him in a boat. I think I have a scale. That is. <laughs> Wow, I'd like to know what that weighs. Wow, that is really something. That is a special bluefish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he was in and he was out. I had my bow gun. Okay, now it's just a matter of whether I actually have a scale that works. That is really something. Yeah, I have a scale, but the, the battery was not sufficient. Ooh, that was a big one. All right, hey, you know, for a trip that uh, wasn't supposed to be, this was really good. And you know, I only showed a few of the bluefish. The total take on this trip was. Uh, 10 bass and uh, 17 blues and uh, some classic fall fishing shows you know, things are uh, really starting to school up. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner and check out my Northeast Fishing Message Board at Salt Strong. I'll have a link to that in the video description. And don't forget my books, including my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surfboat and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.